The police shooting of Jacob Blake in the United States last week has sparked outrage not only in America, but right around the world. Today in London, hundreds took part in an anti-racism rally dubbed the Million People March to show their support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Demonstrators lay down on a road outside Notting Hill tube station to block traffic. And violent and at times deadly protests have erupted across the U.S. as people demand justice for Jacob Blake and an end to police brutality. This week, President Trump will visit Kenosha, where Blake was shot seven times by police. Trump is running his re-election campaign on law and order, labeling protesters thugs. And as Jennifer Johnson reports, his visit is expected to add even more fuel to the fire. It's been a week of protests and anger after a Kenosha, Wisconsin police officer was videoed shooting 29-year-old Jacob Blake in the back seven times during an arrest. No justice, no now the White House says President Trump will visit law enforcement officers in Kenosha, the first time he's visited a city in turmoil after a police-involved shooting. The president's on the side of law enforcement and the rule of law, and he's been very consistent in that. On Twitter Sunday, the president repeatedly threatened to send in the National Guard to clamp down on demonstrators. In Portland overnight, one person was shot and killed during clashes between protesters and counter-protesters as that city faced unrest for the 94th night in a row. Do you seriously wonder, Mr. President, why this is the first time in decades that America has seen this level of violence? It's you who have created the hate and the division. Minneapolis was again hit with more looting three months after George Floyd's death. Protesters and D.C. police clashed late Saturday at the new Black Lives Matter Plaza. Democrats are pointing the finger of blame directly at the president. This is a time more now than ever that we yeah. need to hear from the president of the United States. But the chaos and the disorder and the lawlessness that we are currently seeing that's Donald Trump's America. Kenosha's mayor is appealing for calm, but says the protesters need to be heard. The concern is, is that there is an issue of fairness and equity in their minds. Wisconsin's attorney general says officers tried to stop Blake with tasers, but couldn't. Mr. Blake acknowledged subsequent to this incident that he had a, a knife in his possession. But no explanation is stopping the anger over racial inequity that has swept across America. The White House hasn't said if the president will meet with Blake's family in a further effort to defuse tensions. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington. To Belarus now, where defiant protesters took to the streets for a third straight Sunday following the country's contentious presidential election. Tens of thousands marched in the capital, Minsk, despite warnings from the government. Reports say more than 100 protesters were arrested. And as Mike Armstrong reports, the crackdown comes as the president received a birthday call from his Russian counterpart. Tens of thousands of protesters streamed into the streets of central Minsk Sunday despite knowing the danger that could mean. Here is what that danger looked like. This video appears to show plainclothes officers grabbing a protester off the street, scuffling with the crowd, and finally driving away. A Russian news agency is quoting the Belarusian Interior Ministry as saying at least 125 people were detained. Riot police were out in force, greeted by chants of shame, shame. Previous Sunday marches have been held at the city's Independence Square. That was cordoned off this week, each entrance blocked by government troops. A large crowd gathered instead at the official residence of President Alexander Lukashenko, the man they want to resign. This photo was released by Lukashenko's spokesman Sunday, showing him carrying a weapon at Independence Square. Now, the show of force came on Lukashenko's 66th birthday. For the occasion, Lukashenko did get a happy birthday call from Russian leader Vladimir Putin, a call that included an invitation to visit Moscow in the coming weeks. Lukashenko has struggled to control protests and strikes since his August 9th re-election. Critics say that vote was rigged. But Putin has made it clear Russia is prepared to help. Thursday, the Russian leader said he'd been asked by Belarus to set up a reserve police force and that it would be deployed if necessary. 
Now, Belarus is also cracking down on journalists. Authorities this weekend deported several foreign reporters, including AP, Reuters and the BBC. They've also withdrawn the credentials from several domestic journalists. That means if those Belarusians continue to report, they can be arrested. Lukashenko has accused journalists of inciting the protests against him. Mike Armstrong, Global News.